On today's episode, I'll show you how to edit smartphone portraits quick and easy. I'll even show you how to add a beautiful bokeh effect. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'm excited about this uh, tutorial today because I've been working a lot with my iPhone lately, and I've been using the Lightroom camera app, which lets me shoot in camera raw. And I have to say, I've been really satisfied with the results I'm getting. Within the past few months, I incorporated linear profiles in my raw photo editing starting out in Lightroom. And I want to thank Tony Kuiper for making me a linear profile for my iPhone. Hey, if you don't have a linear profile for your smartphone, you can ask Tony Kuiper to make you one and he'll do it for free. I'll give you a link for that in the description below this video. The other day, my wife and I were out and about. We went to Starbucks to have a cup of coffee and I pulled out my smartphone and I said, hey, honey, can I take a shot of you? And she said, yeah, sure. And this is the shot I got. And as you can see, I added the linear profile that Tony Kuiper made me. And then I clicked on the auto button, which is my standard workflow. And then I just tweaked these adjustments a little bit to taste. And then the only other thing I did was I came to detail and I shut off the sharpening and I shut off the noise reduction because I knew once I got this into Photoshop, I would probably add either uh, Topaz Denoise AI or I'm now trying out this new On One product, On One No Noise AI, which I, I used on this particular image. I'm now an affiliate with On One. In case anybody is interested, you could get some savings uh, on On One products. You can look at my description below where you'll find my affiliate link. You can click on that. It'll take you to the On One site. And I have a promo code, David Kelly, which will get you like 20% off certain products. And who doesn't like to save some extra money? So check that out if you'd like. Oh, and I almost forgot. I went into lens corrections and enabled remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. I always do that. And then I just right clicked on my image, went to edit in, clicked on edit in Photoshop 2022, and I'll meet you there in Photoshop next. And here we are in Photoshop. You'll notice I have a layer called On One No Noise AI. When you're running On One No Noise AI in Photoshop, you don't have to duplicate your background layer. It does it for you. I'll have an upcoming tutorial on uh, On One No Noise AI 2022. It's $10 less than uh, Topaz Denoise AI. And it's very comparable to Topaz Denoise AI. However, Denoise AI, I think, is just slightly better at this point, but that could change. I went ahead and zoomed way in. You can see I'm at like 585% zoom here. And this is the noise level that I have. Now, let me turn on the On One No Noise AI layer. And this is the result I got. As you can see, it totally removed that noise. So it does a really good job. And also, it does a really nice job with the initial sharpening and bringing out some extra detail in the image. Here's the before. So take a look at the lettering up here and my wife's hair. You can see it's done a really good job of sharpening this image and bringing out a lot of the detail. So I start out in Lightroom with a real quick edit, bring it into Photoshop, throw some noise reduction on it. You can use denoise, you can use no noise, you can use camera raw noise reduction, you could use Lightroom's noise reduction whichever one you want to use, really. And then we're going to add some nice bouquet to this. And this is really simple to do. And I've worked with this neural filter before, but we're going to come up here to filter and let's click on neural filters. And which one do you think I'm going to use here? It is a beta filter and it's called depth blur. I've showed several videos where I use this filter and it works really well and I really enjoy it. But right out of the gate, you can see it looks really great, right? And right now it's set for focus subject automatically. See, this is checked on. And really, I'm kind of done at this point because I think it looks really beautiful and it's done a great job. And I did tell you this is quick and easy, so I'm going to keep it there. I have other tutorials on this depth blur filter that you can watch, which shows you how all these different things work, like focus subject and focal range. I'm not going to get into that now because I'm focusing on quick and easy, a beautiful bokeh background. Okay, so I have uh, the focal range set to zero. I have the focus subject on. Now I can increase the blur in the background by dragging this slider to the right, and you'll notice the background will get more out of focus. 
or if I drag it to the left, it'll get more in focus. I'm going to double click and set it back to 50 by default because I think it looks good on this image right here. We can add haze if we want to, but check this out. This is really cool. I can change the temperature of the out of focus area. I can drag this slider a little bit to the left and you'll notice I'll add a little bit of blue to that background or I could add a lot of blue to that background. Okay, but I think right about here looks good. But it only affects the background. Now I could add magenta to the background if I want to, or green to the background, whatever I want, or I could just double click it and add nothing there. But I like that little bit of blue temperature. This saturation and brightness deals with the overall saturation of the image, but something I really enjoy, and I'm gonna zoom in to show you this, you can add realistic grain, which I highly recommend that you do on every one of your out of focus backgrounds, okay? Because your image will look more photographic when you do that. So Right now, there's no grain in that background. It's totally smooth. And that's very unnatural, okay? So I highly recommend that you add a little bit of grain, and I hope you can see that. I'll overdo it so you can really see the grain. See that grain in there? But I'm just adding. It may not show up on the video, but I'm adding just a small amount of grain, which is going to make this look really realistic. Now, I know I denoised it, but adding this little extra grain in here will really help your image. Again, it gives it that more photographic quality, which is really what we want. Now, all we need to do is output this back to Photoshop. Now, we have some choices here. I like to output as a new layer, but if you click this drop down, you have these other choices here. You could output it with a new layer with a mask on it, whatever you want, but I'm just going to output it with a new layer. And then all we need to do is click OK, and we'll be right back into Photoshop. I went ahead and renamed this layer Depth Blur Filter Bokeh Effect, just so we can keep track of what we're doing here. Let's shut this layer off. Look at the before. Would you want this or would you want this? For my money, I'll take this. I love that beautiful bokeh background. It simulates a beautiful high quality 1.8 aperture lens or something of that nature. But my little secret is I shot this on my iPhone using the Lightroom camera app, which enabled me to shoot in camera raw, which gives me better editing capabilities. But I'm not done. I'm going to use another piece of software by On One, and that is uh, Portrait AI 2022, just to do some more professional type retouching on the face. And uh, Luminar Neo has that capability as well. And also with Luminar Neo, you can also blur the backgrounds too. There are many ways of doing things here. And I want to show you the on one way here today. I use No Noise AI and now I'm going to use Portrait AI. So I'll show you how I do it. I don't have to duplicate the background layer, but I'll come over here to File and I'll come down to Automate and I'll come to On One Portrait AI 2022 and I'll click that. Now I'm using the standalone version today of On One Portrait AI and it works as a Photoshop plugin. However, if you have On One Photo Raw 2022, it comes with Portrait AI, but it will not work as a Photoshop plugin the way I understand it. But if you're like me and you use a Lightroom Photoshop workflow, you can just buy Portrait AI as a standalone product. It works as a plugin in Photoshop as well as No Noise AI. It also works as a Photoshop plugin and also their Resize AI, which is similar to uh, Gigapixel. They all work as plugins in Photoshop. Now, remember, I told you this was quick and easy, right? Portrait retouching is not the easiest thing in the world to do, and it's very time consuming. However, with products like On One Portrait AI and, say, Luminar Neo, we can get that kind of processing done very fast. Maybe not to the same quality, but very close and very quick. And that's what I want to show you here today with On One Portrait AI 2022. It's very good. I'm going to do a fast retouch on this image. It's not going to be, uh, you know, super in-depth. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so you can see. Let me show you. Here is the before and here is the after. So as soon as this image comes into Portrait AI, it has some adjustments already done to it. You'll notice I have an area called skin, face, eyes, and mouth. If I shut off skin... Watch the uh, face. The original face comes back. When I turn it back on, it gets retouching. Now, I can increase that amount of retouching by dragging this slider the whole way to the right, and it will get a lot more aggressive on the retouching. Or I can double-click retouching, and it'll go back to zero. 
But I like to start out around 50. I'm going to give this a little bit more, about 60, say 60% here. You can open this up and you have two separate or you have two different styles of uh, of skin retouching. You can do frequency separation or surface blur. I highly recommend uh, frequency separation. That's what I would use if I was uh, doing retouching in Photoshop. But we can work with blemish, blemishes, detail smoothing and texture okay and shine on the face i don't really have much shine so i'm not going to mess with that but i think everything here looks pretty good if i have a lot of blemishes i can start to take this and move it more to the right and it'll get rid of those small blemishes and then if i'm losing too much detail i can come here and drag the detail slider up and pull some of that detail back in there okay but I'm going to go ahead and take it back to about where it was. And I think it was somewhere right around there. And it looks good. You can add more smoothing to the skin if you need it. But let's shut the skin uh, retouching off here. Here's the before and here's the after. So you can see it's done a great job. Now we go to the face. And here's something I really enjoy. Face lighting. Now the artificial intelligence has picked out my face. And you can see it up here in the mask right here. It's masked out the face. Now when I take this brightness and start to move it to the right, See how I can lighten up the face? I can light my wife's face up really nicely. I don't want to go too crazy, but right around there. Okay, I, I didn't use a flash or anything, but look, I can bring some light to the face. I could slim the face by dragging this to the right or pull it in to the left the whole way, and that goes back to the way the face looks, and I'm not going to mess with that, okay? You can adjust the eye size if you want to. Everything looks good here. I'm not going to mess with it. We can adjust the brightness of the eye so we can make the eyes brighter or less bright. We can adjust the whitening and the whitening looks good. And the brightness I think looks really good. I can bring more detail out in the eyes by dragging this to the right and see the details start to come out in the eyes. I don't want to go too crazy here and make it look really artificial. I can get rid of some dark circles and I'll just drag this to the right a little bit. And you can see it's starting to remove those dark circles. I want this natural. I don't want it to be over processed. And then we have brow enhance. I think that looks good. I'm not going to touch it. And then you have uh, auto red eye removal. If you shot with a flash, I didn't. So I don't have to worry about that. And now we come to the mouth. Let me shut the mouth off. And I'll turn it back on. As you can see, it's whitened the teeth slightly. It hasn't touched the lips. And I think it's good. Whenever you bring your image into On One Portrait AI, the AI makes some adjustments initially for you. And I think the mouth looks good. The only thing I may do here is... Give it a little extra teeth whitening, maybe up to 20, and I think that's good. So here's the overall before. Here's the before. And finally, here is the after. But it's just that quick and easy. If you're not a professional portrait photographer and you just want some really great results, but you don't want to waste a lot of time doing skin retouching, these kind of products are great. Before I leave this app, I'm going to go ahead and give the eyes just a little bit of brightness. Maybe something like that right there. Here's the eyes before, and here they are after. So that covers the eyes, the dark circles, all that stuff. And then when you're done, just click done, and that sends you right back into Photoshop. Here's before retouching, and now here it is after. Pretty amazing, and did you ever think you could do it that quickly? And that easily for that matter. Now here's the overall before. We started out looking like this. And now we look like this on an iPhone image. Pretty amazing. Now we could be done right now. I'm really happy, but there's a little issue right here I'd like to get rid of. I'm going to use a spot healing tool to get rid of that. And I want to add a vignette around this image. I'm going to show you a really cool way of adding a organic style vignette around this image. It's really easy. Let me show you. First, let's do the spot healing. I added a blank layer and I grabbed my spot healing tool and I have my tool set to sample all layers and what I'm going to do is just come up here with a very a decent sized brush with a very feathered a really feathered edge on it and just paint over this area right here and just like that I've cleaned it up simple and easy right and now on to the vignette here's what I want you to do grab a lasso tool just type L on your keyboard and let's draw a loose organic shape around this image here I'm going to go around the cup here I want the cup to get a little darker, just like that. And now all we need to do is add a curves adjustment layer or any layer here, really. Uh, you could use levels, curves, exposure. I'm going to use curves because I usually use that. But you can use different types of layers because we're not going to put 
any adjustment on the layer itself. We're just going to use it for a blend mode. So I'm just going to go ahead and change the blend mode from normal to multiply, just like that. Now it's the opposite of what I want. So I'm going to click on the layer mask and do a command or control I to invert the layer mask. And now the vignette's the way I want it. Okay. Now it's way too much. I'm going to pull it down to at least 50 or under. Now it doesn't look right because it's not feathered, but all you need to do is come to the properties here, make sure you click on masks and take the feathering and drag it to the right a good bit to maybe around like 190 to 200 pixels. And like that, we have a really cool organic vignette. And now my coffee cup's a little darker. Check this out. Here's the before and here's the after. And now if that's too strong, I may pull this back to maybe like a 39. Here's the before and here's the after. But those are some finishing touches. And once you feel you're done, you could go ahead and save it. You could do a command or control S. When you go back to Lightroom, it'll be there for you. And then from Lightroom, you could share it, print it, do whatever you want. Or you could right click right in this area and click flatten image and then save it out whatever you want to do. Well, there it is, everyone. That was Smartphone Portraits edited quick and easy with beautiful soft bokeh. Did you ever think you could get these kind of results out of an iPhone or a smartphone image? Well, you can. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.